Franklin is the founder and CEO of Barlane. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Barlane. Very Barley. close. Very close. <laughs> Sorry. And she is a branding content digital strategy and growth expert. Today, she's going to be talking to us about branding versus marketing. And we are very excited to have you here. You're a TED speaker and you're well versed. I'll let you take the wheel on this one. So thank you for the warm introduction. I'm going to just flip on through my slides. I am Taylor. I did found at Bar Lele because I believe everybody deserves a great brand with scalable marketing to grow that brand. So I want to talk about a common scenario as told by hats. So we've all been in the situation before, right? The CEO is like, hey, the board's down my neck. We need to increase revenue and sales by 20% this week this month or this quarter or whatever it is. And then your salesperson says, all right, marketing, I need materials. Help me out here. What can we say? How can we get some things going soon? Send me leads. Your marketing person is like, okay, well, let's get some landing pages up. Let's start some Facebook ads. Let's turn on the marketing jets. So marketing does that. And then sales is like, the leads are crap, right? These aren't the right leads. I can't close any of these leads. And marketing is like, well, we're getting a lot of impressions. And all the while the CEO is like, come on people, what's going on? And then this person over here who often doesn't get pulled into the room is thinking, well, what are you even saying about yourself? How are you presenting yourself? How are you showing up in your sales calls, in your landing pages, in your Facebook ads, in all of these places where you are touching people and hoping to convert them into a new customer? But branding often is not pulled in to that conversation. And I hear this a lot where, you know, you have that kind of scenario. I've lived it in my career. I've been in digital marketing and branding for the last 14 years. And I've heard that and been in that situation a lot. And I've heard that scenario a lot at companies of all different shapes and sizes. And the importance of branding is in driving that revenue at the end of the day because branding creates a connection. So that's what we're gonna talk about here today. When I think about some of the best brands out there in the world and how they've grown and how they have completely shaped the way that people interact with them, I think about Apple. And I know a lot of people who are in branding like to talk about Apple, but I like to talk about the fact that when they released their first iPod, they didn't come out and have a bunch of ads that said, we've got, the most storage in our mp3 player or we've got this cool little scrolly doodad wheel that's going to make it easy for you to press the buttons or we've got the best backlit display that's not what they said they said we've got a thousand songs in your pocket they connected their product to you on a very personal and emotive level and if you were like me at the time, you probably were, you were maybe driving around with a giant book of CDs. And every time you wanted to stop over and change the music, you had to pull over and change it. Or maybe you were on the running trail and you had a huge Walkman with a cassette tape and you could only play that one tape in it. So they connected the product to bringing value into someone's life by doing this phenomenal and remarkable thing, by putting a thousand songs in people's pocket. What's interesting, and I learned this recently from a, a branding coach who I work with, is that 80% of brands actually believe that they deliver a great consumer experience. And only 8% of consumers agree. And this is why I believe so firmly that branding has 
to have more attention paid to it before you turn on those marketing jets, before you start pointing the fingers and say, marketing, turn on some landing pages, sales, I'm trying my best, people, more revenue. You have to think about how you're even showing up in the first place. What is the experience you are bringing to people who do get to interact with your brand? So I'm gonna talk about why does this happen, right? Because a lot of times I like to start with, how do we, what, what do we need to stop doing before we can look at the things that we need to start doing? So why this happens is the world is noisy and normal is noise. Too many brands, too many marketing teams, too many sales teams are just doing normal. We've always done it this way. This is our brand guideline. This is what we say. This is what we do. And normal is actually noisy. Normal is easy to pass up. Normal is easy to scroll on by if I'm scrolling through my LinkedIn feed or my Instagram feed or my Facebook feed. Normal is just the noise. You, every brand, is competing against other people who are being normal and they're competing for attention with everything else going on in their daily lives too, right? So you're competing to get attention from the fact that I gotta go pick up my kids from camp or I gotta go drop off someone at soccer practice or the boss is down my neck or, oh, I gotta call my accountant because that was that thing. And, oh, I got this email, I have to reply back to everyone. So not only are we competing for attention with other brands, with our competitors, but we're competing for attention in every prospect's daily life and all of the things that they have in front of them. And this is why being normal is noisy. This is why branding is important and taking a step back to say, what is the brand? How are we showing up? How are we not being normal? How are we becoming memorable? It's so important. And it's important to understand that distinction between what branding is and what marketing is because they're two different functions and they need to sit together and work together. So that's what I'm going to wrap up with here today, because if you don't give the market the story to talk about, they will define your brand story for you. This is from David Breyer, who I work with as a coach. He's a uh, the author of Brand Intervention. He says this in his book and he has changed and transform so many brands. I love this quote from him from his book. So you get the choice to define your brand story. So how do you do that? You got to stop with the snooze fests, all right? Stop putting to people to sleep with the normal. How do you do that? All right, first off, it stops with only talking about yourself. Right? We've all had that friend or maybe that relationship or that girlfriend or boyfriend who's just talking about themselves all the time, right? And you get to a point where you're like, yeah, 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 enough. Okay, that is boring for your customers. That is normal. We also often don't decide to go out on a limb with our brand because of fear of failure, a fear of being different, fear of being perceived as, you know, those people that go out on a limb. That can feel scary, but it is important. So those are some of the things we got to stop doing. But what do we start doing? We have to start looking at this distinction of branding versus marketing. So let's first own some definitions here. The way I look at branding is it is owning your voice and showing up with it through stories, visualization, and proof of how you bring value into someone's life. Branding is about differentiation about not being normal, about giving someone a reason to stop and to pause and to look at you and to read more. Now, marketing supports the brand. So marketing is important. Marketing is the tactics and the strategies, the way in which you actually get that brand in front of people and have your voice heard. Marketing is about amplification of the brand. So getting the brand a seat at the table 
so to speak. And that's why these two things need to not be looked at so separately, but functions within your company that need to work together. And it starts with first really going deep on figuring out the brand and how you want to show up and then turning on those jets and turning on those that marketing engine to help you determine exactly where to go amplify that brand voice. All right, so quick dive into branding first. I'm going to just leave you with a few quick ideas and tips on things to do with each function. So first, you need to understand what makes up your brand. So a brand is not just a font choice or a logo or a color scheme. There's a lot that goes into it. It's, it is your brand identity. Those are the things of like, how do you look? What are your visuals? What are the words that you say? What's the design? What are, what's the medium of communication that you use in different mediums? But then it also is inclusive of the people at your company. Who are you? The channels you show up on, the differentiation. How are you different? How are you breaking through that normal? What is your product or service? And then what is the experience that people have with your product or service? So all of these things go into the brand. And I bring this up because brand is often thought of as sort of a nebulous concept, right? What is this? These things make up your brand. These things make your company memorable. These things make people stop and take a second look at you when done well. So steps to getting there. First is show up with authenticity, be relevant and be really, really clear about what matters to the person on the other side of your brand and tell a story. Storytelling creates common ground between you and your audience. And lastly, I, I love this, um, the authentic brand. This is my, my viewpoint on like authenticity is a word that is almost becoming a cliche now. People talk about it a lot in the branding space, but the way I really think about it, because you know, one day I was like, I wanna just break this down. The way I think about the authentic brand is it's showing up with originality, being really clear about you, who you are and what you do and what you're good at and what you're not good at too. And then having a lot of conviction about it and who you are. All right, so let's wrap up with marketing. Okay, so that's a little bit about branding and the differences in branding. Let's talk about marketing. I want you to take one moment to just write down one thing, one or two things. If you've got a piece of paper or pull up a notepad on your computer, think about marketing that has connected with you or a brand that's connected with you. I want you to write down why. One of the best ways to learn and to improve our own brand and our own marketing is to look at what's working on you, ask yourself why, and then think through, hmm, how can I learn from this and how can I apply it to my marketing program, to my marketing team? So think about that. Reflect on it a little bit later today after you've gotten a lot of good content from all the amazing speakers today and then take that back with you when you start to think about your own brand and sales and marketing now marketing again i said it's the it's the engine so this is a slide with a lot of stuff on it because there's a lot of different ways to turn on engine right but at the center of it are your differentiators and all around your differentiators and how you're showing up as not normal are all of these assets and things and places to share your story and mediums and channels. It starts with defining that voice and the differentiators at the center. And that's why I say it starts with branding first and then determining what are the best channels where your audience is most likely to connect. And then you start turning on those jets. But again, if you, if you just turn on the marketing jets first and just start pumping out a lot of content without a lot of that brand strategy first, that's when you end up in those situations where everyone is pointing the finger and no one wants to take the blame and nothing's really actually working. 
These are all at the end of points. And I just want to give you a one minute wrap up warning, although I can tell you're doing it yourself. That's okay. Um, and I so resonate with everything that you're saying um, because I'm in branding and marketing as well for financial firms, which a lot of the time don't get these connection points either. But for all types of businesses, these, this differentiator between branding and marketing is very important. So important. It's good timing. This is my last slide. So at the end of the day, show up as a human. That's really what works today. It's really what helps to connect. It's really what helps to cut through that noise and to not be human. And it's important to show up consistently and then play to the channel that you are on because different channels do have different tones of voice. Now you need to show up for your business in your authentic brand self, right? With your originality, your clarity, and your conviction of who you are. But there is some nuance and some playing to the channel that is important. One of the most important things is to put consistency and channel together and meet people on those channels, whatever it is, whether it's email marketing or LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or what have you, meet people as humans. And you will start to resonate and you will start to connect and you will start to have people stop scrolling because you won't be the normal. You will be interesting. You will be human. You will be like Apple who was selling a thousand songs in your pocket. This Thank is you. wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Taylor. We really do appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. 